So, you have a 90s movie for me? Weird of you to specify the decade, but yes sir, I do. Amazing, so what's it about? Well, you remember a couple years ago there was an Air Jordan commercial featuring Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny? Of course, that was super popular. Right, so I was thinking, you know, let's do that. A movie based on a shoe commercial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it already, so what happens in this thing? Well, we're gonna start with Michael Jordan when he was a kid. Oh, is that gonna be important to the film moving forward? Not really, no. Then we're gonna jump forward in time and he's gonna retire from the NBA to play baseball. Ball. That is a thing that happened. Then we're gonna fly off into space and meet these aliens that run a theme park called Moron Mountain. Okay. And things aren't going so well business-wise, so they need to figure out a way to attract new customers. Do they start by changing the name from Moron Mountain to something else? No, they decide, you know, to uh, enslave the Looney Tunes. Oh, that works too. So then these little bug aliens head down to Earth to pick up their new slaves. Okay, so the Looney Tunes live on Earth? Of course. They live in the Earth's core, you idiot. So the center of the Earth is a cartoon. Yep, and Please don't overthink this. Okay. So anyway, the bugs go see bugs. Oh, the bugs go see other bugs? No, they go see Bugs Bunny. That makes more sense. This is why you're the writer. And they're like, you know, come with us. You're gonna be slaves now. Yikes, so the Looney Tunes must freak out. Yeah, but then Bugs Bunny scribbles a note in a fake rule book, and it says they need to give them a chance to defend themselves. And that works? Yeah, the little aliens are like, oh man, if it's in the rule book, we have to listen. So if that works, why doesn't Bugs just write another rule saying that they're not allowed to enslave them? Because the movie has to happen. Oh, okay, right. So then the Looney Tunes meet and they're like, okay, these aliens are small, they can't jump, we should challenge them to a basketball game. Feels like track and field might have been more appropriate, don't they have the road runner? Listen, do you want Michael Jordan in this or not? Yeah, I do. So they're gonna challenge the aliens to basketball. Well, okay then. So the aliens accept the challenge and then we find out they don't even know what basketball is. Oh wow, well sounds like the Looney Tunes made a good choice then. Well, not so fast, cause the aliens are gonna bring this magic basketball they brought with them, and they're gonna go steal the talent out of some NBA players. Wait, didn't you just say they didn't know what basketball was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then why would they have a magic basketball with them? I don't know. Fair enough. So then the aliens absorb the stolen talent from the NBA players, and that turns them into these giant pro basketball aliens called the Monstars. So did the NBA players turn tiny? No, they stayed the same size. What are you talking about? So why would stealing their talent change their size in any way? Do you really expect me to have an answer to that? No, I guess not. Good, because I absolutely don't. So anyway, I imagine Bugs Bunny will add another note in the rule book saying that stealing talent isn't allowed? He will not. Why not? Because that was just a one-time plot device. Please forget about it forever and get off my back. Well, okay, I'll get off of that thing. Anyway, so then the Looney Tunes are gonna figure out that their only hope of winning is to get some help. So they go get Michael Jordan. So they go get Michael Jordan. Wow. Yeah, so Bugs Bunny pulls him into a golf hole while he's out golfing with his assistant Stan and Bill Murray and Larry Bird. Oh my god, they must freak out. No, Larry Bird and Bill Murray just take off. They're like, yeah, we feel bad, but it's time to go. That's their reaction to Michael Jordan being sucked into a hole in the ground? Yeah, because if two high-profile individuals freak out about this, then I need to continue that story thread in some way. Right, maybe they get the press involved? That sounds really interesting. It sounds like a lot of work. Oh, and you don't feel like working? Hell no. Okay, that's okay. So they just leave? They just go. Okay, okay. So then Michael Jordan meets the Looney Tunes, and they're like, you need to help us win a basketball game against some aliens. Wow, he must be losing his mind. It's gonna be tough to convince him to play. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, because first of all, he is barely phased that he's suddenly in a cartoon world at the center of the Earth and that aliens exist. Oh, he's pretty calm. Incredibly calm. His one thing is that he's like, guys, I play baseball now, not basketball. That's that's what he sticks on in this situation? Yeah, but then he's gonna get over that, you know, pretty much immediately. Wow, that was easy. Sure was. So what other basketball players do they recruit? What? Well, I mean, if they're allowed to have Michael Jordan play on the team, they can have some other ones too. Oh yeah, I guess they could, but they're not gonna. How come? Because? That works. And then a really sexy female rabbit's gonna walk in. What? Yeah, we're gonna play sexy jazz music. She's gonna walk all sensually. What? Why are you doing this? And Bugs Bunny's gonna get all turned on because of how hot she looks. Do we really need a storyline where the cartoon rabbit gets horny? I sure would like that. You're a, you're a pretty weird guy, huh? Yeah. All right, well, we'll put it in the movie if you promise to never come near my kids and family. It's a deal, sir. I already can't go near schools and playgrounds. That's actually comforting to know. Good. So anyway, then the Looney Tunes are gonna face a real challenge. Challenge. Oh, they are? Yeah, Michael's gonna realize that if he's gonna play, he's gonna need his sneakers and his lucky shorts. Oh my god. Yeah, he doesn't have them. That's insane. I know, so then Bugs and Daffy are gonna have to go get them at his house. Why can't Michael go? Unclear. Oh, and then Michael's dog is gonna have the shorts in his mouth, so it's definitely gonna be an adventure. Out of all the objects in the mansion, the dog has Michael's lucky shorts in his mouth? Oh, Michael Jordan doesn't live in a mansion. He and his family live in a normal house. Honestly, that's probably the least realistic thing you've said today. I know, right? Anyway. 
anyway, then it's time for the big game. Oh, already? Yep. Feels like nothing has happened. It sure does. Wow. And now Michael's assistant is there too, and he wants to play, but he's too fat and slow. It's too bad they didn't recruit other basketball players. Shut up about that. Oh, okay. So as the player coach of the Toon Squad, Michael Jordan's like, you know, let's just go out there and have fun. Isn't slavery on the line? Feels like they should take it a little more serious than that. Yeah, he just thinks they should have some fun with it. Well, okay then. So then the game is gonna start and the Monstars are just gonna physically assault them hardcore. Oh no. Yeah, they're gonna get punched and kicked. Granny's gonna get crushed. Is there a referee? Sure there is. It's Marvin the Martian and he's not calling anything. Why is he the ref? Because he's an alien and a Looney Tune, I guess? That actually kind of makes sense. Anyway, so by halftime, the Toon Squad are losing bad. Probably because they were just out there trying to have fun. Maybe. And so Michael Jordan convinces the team to take some performance enhancing drugs. Oh, he does. Well, no, it's actually just water with his name on the bottle. I guess people will buy anything if it has a famous person's name on it. That's the whole idea behind this movie, yeah. True. Anyway, then Michael's gonna talk to the big alien boss guy and make the bet a little more interesting. Oh, really? Yeah, he's gonna be like, if you guys win, you get to take me home as a slave. Why would he volunteer himself like that? Doesn't he have children at home? Yeah, I guess he doesn't really care about them so much. I guess not. And then one of the Monstars is gonna be about to jump on Lola Bunny, but Bugs is gonna push her out of the way. It's gonna be super dramatic. Wait, people have been getting their butts kicked the whole time. Why is this dramatic? He's gonna hit a girl. You can't do that. What about Granny? You said she got crushed. Well, she's not hot, so who cares? Right, okay. So then Lola's gonna be so grateful, she's gonna give me a big kiss on the lips. Don't you mean she gives Bugs Bunny a big kiss on the lips? Oh, uh... Yeah, I guess that works too. And so then what happens? Well, now the Toon Squad has a bunch of injured players and Stan gets to play. Oh, good for him. And he immediately gets crushed and turns into a giant fart balloon. Uh, giant fart balloons are tight. Yeah, so then Bill Murray shows up in uniform ready to play. Wait, what? When did he get there or learn about this or start caring? He's gonna be like, I'm friends with the producer. You can get Ivan Reitman to help produce this, right? I mean, probably, but that joke explains nothing. It's like a uh, clever meta humor. Is it clever meta humor or just lazy writing? I don't know. Fair enough. And how does the movie end? Well, Michael is gonna find out that he can also use cartoon physics, so he does that and wins. Fantastic. And then the Monstars are gonna give the talent back and ask if they can stay with the Looney Tunes instead of going home to Moron Mountain. Okay. And then Michael has to make it to a baseball game, so he rides home in a spaceship. Wait, was the game taking place in space or in Looney Tune land? Looney Tunes land in the center of the Earth. But he descends to the game in a spaceship? That's right. Wow, you didn't even try to have this make sense. Not even a little. Then we're gonna have a song that's like, I believe I can fly. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I was thinking we could get someone nice and wholesome, you know, like R. Kelly. Isn't he kind of sketchy? I don't think so. I usually have a pretty good radar for these things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now let me ask you something. Were you on a lot of drugs when you put this thing together? Oh yeah, a ton. But I'm pretty confident there's no permanent damage. Wow. Wow. Well, it sounds like it could make a lot of money, so I'm on board. Amazing, and plus after like two decades, people will start to get nostalgic about this and you can make another one. Well, I don't think people are ever gonna get nostalgic about a live action cartoon hybrid movie based on a shoe commercial. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs>